Okay, for this problem, we have a claim that the limit as n goes towards infinity of n plus 3 over n squared minus 13 is equal to 0. And we're going to follow the typical epsilon n proof here, which I like to call putting on the g cap. And so it has four steps to it. Given, choose, assume, and prove. Given, choose, assume, and prove. And so the general process is first in orange we have to be given. So we let epsilon greater than zero be given. And we're hoping that we can find an n that makes us small enough to make this object here to be less than epsilon. So we have to choose a delta, or not a delta, sorry, an n. So we're going to choose n to be equal to something, but I don't quite know what yet. But once I find that, then we're going to assume that, and we're going to assume that n, little n, is bigger than capital N, and when we do that, hopefully we will be able to prove that if we take our expression, n plus 3 over n squared minus 13, I'm hoping we will be able to show that this can be made less than epsilon. And if we can do this, then we have performed our proof. Now the problem is we have to show that this object is less than epsilon this expression over here, because this is n plus 3 over or n squared minus 13 minus 0, technically, right? Because that's the limiting value, supposedly. So what do we really want? We want n plus 3 over n squared minus 13. We wish for this to be less than epsilon. Now, you could attempt to try to do this algebraically, but it's probably going to be a little bit messy. So let's see if we can make some abbreviations and shortcuts and other bounds to make this a little easier on ourselves. So first of all, in the numerator, if I want to make the fraction be larger, because I really just need to bound it eventually by epsilon, I could just simply put something in the numerator here that is larger than n plus 3. Now n is a line with a slope of 1, so one really kind of obvious thing we could put on the top that would be larger than n would be 2n. But you might say 2n is not always larger than n plus 3. For example, if we let n equal some numbers, maybe this doesn't happen. Maybe negative numbers, maybe something ridiculous. So let's actually just ask that question down here. When is n plus 3 truly less than 2n? When does this actually happen? Well, notice that if we were to subtract n from both sides, we would get that 3 would have to be less than n. In other words, we would need n to be larger than 3. So in other words, for 3, this is actually equal. For 2, we get 5 over on the left and 4 on the right. So it's not even true for 2. But once we go to 4 and beyond, the integers from 4 and beyond, this inequality will be true for the numerator. Now how do you make a fraction larger in terms of the denominator? You need to make your denominator be smaller. So since the coefficient to the n squared in the denominator is just a 1, let's make that denominator be smaller and let's force it. We're going to force it with a 1 half n squared. Because instead of taking a 1 n squared, we have a half of an n squared. We've made it smaller. But again, this is not always true, right? You stick in numbers like, uh, there's a whole bunch of numbers you can stick in here that would not make it true. So let's just test it out. What would we have to do to make that happen? Well, when is n squared minus 13 actually truly, when is this actually, we want to make the fraction larger, so we have to have this 1 half n squared here. And if I want to make the fraction larger, then I need to make my denominator be smaller. So I need the inequality to go this direction. So for the blue, if we subtract n squared over to the left-hand side, we get 1 half n squared, add 13 over to the right-hand side, multiply by 2, and it looks like if we just take a square root here, we need n to be larger than radical 26. And radical 26, I don't have a calculator on me, but I know that's bigger than 5, right? 5 would be a good bound here then. I need n bigger than 5, and if n is bigger than 5, then I can guarantee that this is true. Similarly, if I know n is bigger than 3, I can guarantee that this is true. And if both of these additions check out, then that assures me that this will be true. 
and notice that thanks to those bounds, it's a lot easier to work with now. Uh, let's see, 2, 1 half, that would be 4, and this would be over n. And then just simply concentrating on this inequality, if I want this to happen, that would just be like saying n over 4 needs to be bigger than 1 over epsilon, and so we would need n to be larger than 4 over epsilon. So we need the red condition to hold and the blue condition to hold so that we can say that this expression, this inequality is true. And if that inequality is true, then we can choose our n to be larger than 4 over epsilon to ensure that this inequality holds. So now we're actually ready for the proof. We're going to come over here and we're going to have to say, let capital N be the maximum, right? We need it to be large enough. And how large do we need it? We have to be bigger than 3, bigger than 5, and bigger than 4 over epsilon. So we're going to choose N to be the maximum of 5 and 4 over epsilon. I don't need the 4 because since I'm, cho or sorry, the 3 because I'm choosing it to be bigger than 5 to ensure that both of these hold. And then the other piece makes sure that the inequality is going to hold. So what's my advantage now? So now when we come down to the actual formal proof in the red, we have that this is equal to n plus 3 over n squared minus 13. Because of the choice of n being bigger than the max, little n being bigger than cap n and cap n being the max of these, I know from the discussion on the other page that I can bound 2n as a larger numerator and I can put a 1 half n squared as a smaller denominator. So again, these bounds are really thanks to that 5. Simplification, this is the same as 4 over n. And now, since n was bigger than n, we can make sure that this is less than 4 over capital N. But what was capital N? Well, capital N is the max of these two numbers right here. So this is definitely going to be less than 4 over 4 over epsilon. And multiplying by the reciprocal yields the epsilon, just as we wish. And that's generally how you find bounds on these rational expressions in order to prove the limit of a rational function.